Good afternoon. Welcome to my daily chat. This is episode number 516. How to tell if you're over someone. Um, getting into the whole breakup and reconciliation and next relationship type conversation since that comes up occasionally. I actually got a request for information about that today. Before I jump into that, let me introduce myself so you know who I am and what I'm about. My name is Barry Selby. I am a best-selling author, speaker, and relationship attraction expert. And I help strong, successful women attract and find balance in love, life, and business. I'm also a passionate champion for the divine feminine. And every day for almost two years now, I've done a daily talk called Messages from the Masculine to Inspire Your Feminine Heart. And today's topic is inspired by a, um, a listener in our audience, something like that. <laughs> I got an email about something and, and I wanted to talk about it, which is how to know when you're over somebody, when you've broken up with them, how do you know if you're over them? Because a lot of people don't know about this. And a lot of people tend to date whilst they're still enmeshed energetically with their past relationship partner. So this could be kind of uh, distressing for you. Maybe, maybe not. But let me just drop this in your lap first. So, this is in a simple way. When a relationship ends, <laughs> so this way, I'm not trying to be funny about that, but about the ways I can talk about this. There's an energy shift, which sounds so metaphysical, but I want to speak about it that way first and then come into the nuts and bolts. So you're disengaging from somebody energetically. And if you've been together for a while, that enmeshment's pretty intense, especially if you've got a codependent paradigm, which is about codependency before, and you're hooked in tight. So when you disengage, it takes a while to loosen up and slowly separate. So the idea being that you're over somebody might be that you think after a week away, you're, you're good, you're good to go, you're okay, you're fine, you can be, move on. But the reality is you're still dragging a lot of the baggage and the enmeshment around in your life, in your feelings, in your sleep, in your field, in your paradigm for perhaps weeks or months afterwards if you don't do something about it. And I'll talk about that in a moment because there are ways around this. But we're tempted sometimes to feel like we have a vacuum that got created by leaving that relationship and we'll fill it with somebody else because we don't want that, that, that feeling of emptiness, that feeling, that vacuum is painful. And rather than deal with the pain, we'd rather fill that pain with something else, that void with something else. So by putting someone else in place in the relationship, we can move right along and be fine, except that vacuum isn't anything to do with that new person. That's when the old person, the new relationship, old relationship, excuse me. So this challenge that you're facing is that you're starting to build a um, reduced capacity to express love fully. So that again, the vacuum, that space that's been made by the other person, until you restore it internally versus put it with somebody else, gives you a reduced capacity to express love fully. I spoke about this last uh, months ago, actually, about Barbara DeAngelis to talk about how when you break up with somebody, you have these um, it's like, if you imagine what you love is like, an, like a, a sea or an ocean, and, the, and when you break up with somebody, and if you don't resolve and heal what happened in the breakup, you start putting these blocks of ice over the ocean, so eventually you have less and less ability to feel because you're being numbed out, and you don't get to speak, feel. In this context, I mean the same thing, that when you are in the space after a relationship and you haven't done any healing work, resolving work, making peace, forgiveness, etc., etc., then you've got this... Uh, numbed out area, this vacuum as I called it, this gap inside that you're filling with somebody else's love as a, I won't say placeholder, but certainly as a substitute for being in love with yourself. Yes, being in love with yourself, I said that. The truest way to get over somebody after a breakup is to start remembering where you've stopped loving yourself. This shift, this turn, as it were, this, this real realignment will give you the ability to be free about making your choices going forward. The challenge for most people is they're not looking how to be self-sufficient, looking for the next one to fill the gap. And that's a mistaken approach. Relationships are not meant to be contiguous, joined together like links in a chain. That's not effective. Because what you're doing is you're handing over one problem to the next person and they're taking on their problems and it's all enmeshed and intertwined and you get very conflicted stuff by the time you get down four or five relationships. If you're someone who dates like that, you may know what I mean. 
However, however, if you take the time after a relationship ends to be with yourself, to make peace with what happened, to learn how to love yourself once again, because you may have forgotten much in that last relationship, to restore to yourself your full beingness, and to be whole for, um, how to say this, to be full so that you can be approaching a new relationship from a wholeness place. Because the other thing is, by the way, sidebar slightly, is if you didn't do any of that work when you got out of your last relationship, you're basically walking along somewhat energetically incomplete. So you meet somebody new, they're looking at you as being somebody less than whole. So if they're going to be with you, they're probably not going to be fulfilled either. And this is going to become the, um, well, it's basically the law of diminishing returns is that you're not going to get full value and satisf value? satisfaction in this relationship, nor would they. So it doesn't work for anybody. So before you get into another relationship, my strong recommendation is you take time to be with yourself, to learn to love yourself again, to remember how to love yourself again, to practice loving yourself again. You get my point. I'm being pedantic about that. But also that you heal, release, resolve those past wounds because that's going to fill up the vacuum inside, that gap I was talking about at the beginning. When you fill that limited space or fill up that vacuum with your own loving and your own forgiveness, your own compassion, your own self-care, your own appreciation, then you'll be healed much faster. Then you'll get over the past relationship and then you can move on cleanly to attract a new relationship. Most people don't do this, which is why a lot of relationships are really diminished because of it. But if you want to have a, a, an amazing, powerful, amazing, fulfilled relationship, it's amazing twice, didn't I? Yeah. Um, you, get, you get my enthusiasm, enthusiasm for that. Your ability to have an amazing relationship will be fulfilled more powerfully by being fully loving yourself first. I've talked about this many times in other places, but I want to give you this context of the post breakup experience. Because for most people, for most people, the Breakup time is the place where they want to numb the pain out the best way they can, which could be with alcohol or drugs, or with a new relationship, or just someone to sleep with, because that happens too. But if you face those demons, you face that pain, and you face that vacuum, as I mentioned, and you heal it, you don't need any of that stuff. In fact, you become free and capable of loving once again from a whole place, and that, frankly, is what I wish everybody did took the time to do. It's a much more conscious, much more holistic and a much healthier way to move into a new relationship. Let's see if there's any homework I want to give. Um, I don't want to keep repeating, making the points. So I'm going to make it clear. Plus, I got to dash out because I actually got another talk to go to. Um, sidebar: 6:30 p.m. tonight. I'll be doing. It's Tuesday night, so 6:30 p.m. tonight. My friend Gina and I will be doing it live together at 6:30 p.m. Pacific time on our, both our uh, Facebook pages. So I'll be, we're doing about politics and dating. Yeah, we're going to have some fun with that. That's tonight, so I'm just already thinking about that. So let me bring back to this topic for a second. Self-love is the key. It really is. I've got the self-love practice. I talk about it all the time. I'll put the link in the comments so you can check it out. But if you haven't learned how to love yourself during a relationship or after a relationship, you're missing out on the ability to love fully as well. Because when you love yourself, you become more capable of loving more fully somebody else. Or loving somebody else more fully, either way around my grammar correct but it's the challenge we face it because so many of us are running around looking for someone else to make us feel happy to make us feel whole to love us so we don't feel any pain anymore and that's an errant approach it's not their job first of all it really isn't their job because they are themselves and they may be carrying their own wounds this is the problem most relationships start with two people carrying their wounds in this relationship and they ain't pretty if you've been there you know what I mean so my advice, my recommendation, my counsel to you is whilst you're single, between relationships, do what you need to do to love yourself again, restore yourself with self-love, heal, release, be grateful for, and yes, be grateful for those wounds from the past and make them and allow them to leave so you can be free, then you can move forward into the relationship you want to attract into your life, clean and whole again. Because if you do it from an incomplete place, you're going to be codependent, and you know I do not appreciate, recommend, or counsel codependence as a way of life. It's a trap we fall into too easily. And I hope, I'm actually hope to eradicate it as part of my mission. <laughs> so with that, I think I'm going to wrap this up because I do have to think, I'm already thinking about tonight's talk. Um, 
I appreciate you being with me. It's a, quick, it's a, it's a quickie today. Yeah, it's a quickie today. Um, but I'll be doing it live. I'm doing it together with Gina live at seven, at six thirty p.m. So join us for that one. Um, again, I put the self love practice in the comments. You can check it out. I appreciate you being here as always. Your homework tonight. Your homework after this is if you're single now after a recent breakup, what is it that you're still judging about yourself or your past partner that you haven't resolved yet? What are you feeling upset about? What are you carrying as a wound? What are you feeling righteous about in your past relationship? Because any of that stuff is in the way of your next one. So before you go on a date again, you want to face those demons and resolve them. That's part of what I can do with my clients. I'll tell you, if you want to find out more about that, you can sign up for a book's discovery session. I'll put the link for that in the comments as well. And those two things can help you if you want to move forward. If you don't, your choice. I'm not going to make it a requirement, but I do advise it. Um, with that, quick reminders, this is my Facebook Live, where I do it first, then goes into YouTube, and then as my podcast. The links are these. <coughs> Personal page broadcast first, then goes onto my business page on Facebook, which is Barry Selby, the author, then repurposed onto YouTube, which is also Barry Selby, my social media is Barry Selby. The uh, playlist is Messages from the Masculine. Subscribe to my channel, please. You can also subscribe to my podcast, which is on, also called Messages from the Masculine, and the... Um, those you can download in audio format and listen to any time you want. With that, thank you for watching. Um, I will be back in on this channel, my usual broadcast at 5 p.m. Pacific, excuse me, at 5 p.m. Pacific time tomorrow. Let me say that clearly. But again, I'll be back on tonight at 6.30 p.m. with my friend Gina. We'll do our daily Tuesday talk, sorry, a weekly Tuesday talk, which will be fun. Um, and that's about it. I appreciate you watching. I'll see you again soon. Take care of yourselves. Bye.